guys, it is Alice here. I am a doula, a childbirth educator, and I spin the big wheel of birth to see what topic we're gonna to talk about today. Let's do it. Today we're talking about an important phase of labor, and that is pushing. So pushing technically is called the second stage of labor. So real quickly, the first stage of labor is the dilating and the effacement of the cervix. So the cervix getting out of the way and then the baby has descended. And so the second stage of labor is pushing the baby out. Now, after that is the third stage of labor, which we have a video on here, and that's the delivery of the placenta. So second stage of labor is pushing and pushing is really the time that instead of working through the contractions and trying to just get get over them, get through them, get by them, pushing is where we can give effort to really work with our contractions. Now, one of the questions that is so um, common in my class and people didn't don't realize sometimes is that you only push with the contractions so when it's time to push your baby out you aren't doing this continuous pushing over and over again like they show in TV and the movies they get it all wrong pushing is just done during contractions so a contraction starts that's when you push and bear down with the contraction and then as that contraction ends you rest. So you still have that rest time in between. Now pushing can take a long time and it really depends on if it's your first baby or whether you have had a vaginal birth before. So if you've had a vaginal birth before, usually the second, a second, third, fourth baby, the pushing phase is going to be a lot shorter. So the first time you push a baby out, generally the pushing phase lasts between say, half an hour until two hours, three hours. And it's not uncommon for first timers to push for two hours. Now you might be thinking, oh my God, that's a long time to push. And it is, but sometimes it goes by fast. So I have heard a lot of people say, I can't believe I've been pushing for two hours. It doesn't seem that long. That is very common. Now it's hard work. And so if you are supporting someone who's pushing, one of my favorite, favorite things to have ready to go is a cool washcloth. And I go into detail on washcloths. I do. It's a topic on the wheel in this video. And I'll put a link down to below to the washcloth video. Having a cool washcloth ready to go and a cool drink, some water to sip on, some kind of juice, an electrolyte drink, something like that. Both of those are really important to have nearby if you're the support person put, helping someone pushing. Now the act of pushing can kind of differ depending upon if you are pushing with an epidural or pushing without an epidural. So pushing without an epidural, you have the ability to change positions and push in different positions. And as a Lamaze educator, I like to encourage upright pushing positions. Um, upright positions might include pushing while standing, pushing while in an upright kind of seated position, pushing on the toilet, pushing in a squatted, squatting position. Um, even hands and knees is con considered more of an upright position for pushing. And the easiest way to talk about why upright positions are good for pushing is just to think about gravity, right? That was me dropping my imaginary ball, gravity. So working with gravity, working with the way that our pelvis is designed so when we're pushing up right, we, the um, sacrum has the ability to move out of the way. And if we are flat on our back, our sacrum doesn't, it doesn't have the ability to move out of the way and just open up that pelvis some more. So alternative positions, if you have an epidural and you're unable to get upright, a great position is a side line. So on your side with one leg up, sort of being held up. That way your sacrum has the ability to move. Even if you don't lie all the way on your side, if you just tilt a little bit, that can help the sacrum have that movement and your uh, pelvis have that increased space to help with pushing. So depending upon how strong your epidural is, 
or how much numbness you're feeling in your legs and if you're able to support yourself when your legs kind of have an effect on your options for pushing. Now that's, that's, those are pushing positions. Let's talk a bit about pushing style. So there are sort of two schools, two ways of pushing. One would be to go with the body's natural urges. And the most, the easiest way for me to describe this is when I compare it to having the urge to poop, having the urge to have a bowel movement where you are maybe driving in a car, you're looking for a bathroom to stop on the side of the road and you feel like you are about to go to the bathroom in your pants. That is that desire to push. And it's very strong, but it's usually not strong unless you don't have an epidural. So if you have an epidural, you might not find that natural urge to push very strong. But if you don't have an epidural, generally there will come a time after you're dilated that you will start, the contractions will start feeling less like contractions and more just like pressure and an urge to bear down. So that is a sensation that with an epidural, sometimes people will start feeling pressure. So instead of, they, and I've also experienced where people feel like their epidural might be wearing off because they're starting to feel that pressure and that can be mean that it's time to push. So if you have an epidural and you're starting to feel that pressure sensation come on, it's great to notify your nurse. They might check your cervix at that time and see if it actually is time to push. So the two types of pushing, one would be to go with your natural urges and to work with them. And generally that is breathing when you need to, doing more of a grunt, kind of a push and a grunt at that during that contraction. The second school of pushing, way of pushing, is directed pushing, which that would mean a lot of times the nurse would um, sort of be leading your pushing, sort of be directing the pushing by saying, take a deep breath in and then hold down, bear down for a count to 10, and then take another deep breath in, bear down, and do that three times during the contraction. So often we see that the directed pushing is done with people with an epidural. Um, and sometimes with an epidural, you don't really feel a need, feel a desire to push, and you might not even feel any sensations knowing that you're having contraction, which just make pushing a little bit challenging. And sometimes our nurse has to let us know, okay, contraction starting, begin the pushing process. So there, and then in between the two of the uh, going with your own urges and the directed pushing, you can be somewhere in between where maybe you are breathing with your contractions and pushing and not holding your breath. Um, holding your breath has been shown to have adverse effects on pushing, results of pushing, and on the baby as well. Though it's still done, I would say, a lot. Like, a, a significant amount in, with epidurals. But it's something to think about um, how you want to push and what feels good to you. And, and maybe something to do a little bit more reading into as well. Which I can put some good links down below if you want to dive into this um, type of pushing. Now when you have an epidural, if you don't aren't able to feel, it sometimes can be a little hard to get the hang of how to push, especially if you're a first timer. So a couple things that can help. One is if you have a mirror set up so that you can see your perineum. Now some people might say, no, I don't want to see a mirror, but even a mirror for a little while so you can see um, the progress of baby's head. When you are pushing, the baby does a lot of like two steps forward, one and a half step back. So the baby's the baby's motion is very in, come, comes out a little, comes in, comes in. So you can see a little bit of head and then you can't see a little bit of head and then you can't. And that's very normal. That's as the baby is being pushed through the vagina, down through, passing through um, the very last part of the pelvis their head is molding and they are making their way I, they have to be guided out gently and sometimes that takes time <clears throat> so sometimes putting a mirror up can help you train your body to know okay that's what it means to push 
The other thing that sometimes will happen is your care provider, your nurse, will put two fingers with consent in your vagina so that you can feel where you need to be pushing to. And sometimes that just is a way to sort of connect your head with where you're supposed to be pushing and make pushing more effective because it does take sometimes some time a little learning process to get the pushes in the right area and to be effective to not hold a lot of tension in your legs hold a lot of tension in your butt but in instead direct the attention towards your uterus and pushing that baby down and out so the fingers in the vagina and a mirror can sometimes help with pushing now if the baby's heart rate is going too low during pushing or they're a little bit worried about baby during pushing they might um, suggest that an oxygen mask be added so that you would use that in between contractions then take it off between um, that can sometimes be something that happens during pushing or if there is too much if the baby is um, needs to be born immediately if we're seeing anything that is worrisome about the baby there might be the talk of an episiotomy or a an assisted birth which would be done with a vacuum or with forceps so both of those are tools to help assist pushing if there is a need for the baby to be delivered immediately um, then there is usually a discussion about both of those so pushing is a important phase that second phase of labor and though it might not come naturally when it does get going um, generally you can get the hang of it now support team one thing i want you to be super aware of um, besides having your washcloths and your sips of water is make sure that you're not yelling <laughs> it is so tempting to want to yell push and stronger um, and you can kind of get caught up where you don't even realize you're yelling and you're actually yelling. Yelling is not helpful to the person giving birth. Saying things like you're doing a great job, that was a good one, oh I saw a big change at that one, push just like that, or the third push was the best of them all, or the second push was your best push. Those kind of um, more specific positive um, things are so much better than just yelling push and push harder because you know the person giving birth is probably pushing very hard and it's it's not very helpful to have that yelling especially if the nurse is yelling and you're yelling and doula is yelling everyone's yelling i don't suggest it some good um, feedback is really helpful to say that was a great push the nurses can do this as well and then if you hear the nurse say that was your strong strongest push you can say you just gave your best push you don't have to really know you could just echo what they say so just a little hints for uh, partners it can be very exciting and easy to want to get in there and start screaming but not very helpful so let me know your thoughts about pushing and if you have questions about pushing as well you can put them down in the comments below and if this help video was helpful to you hit the like button if you are not in the free course birth a to z why don't you give that a look that is all of our previous spins that have been organized into a really easy to use uh, free program called birth a to z and hope to see you there or see you next time on the big wheel of birth thanks for joining me today guys see you soon